May 15, debit cash, credit, unearned refiller revenue. So, ito naman yung mga advance payment from customers. So, cash receipt pa rin galing sa customers yan. So, lalagay pa rin natin dito as operating activities kasi yan ay galing sa customers. Kahit advance payment pa yan or unearned revenue pa yan, considered pa rin yan as operating activities as cash received from customers. Cash received from customers na 10,000 pesos. May 19, debit accounts receivable, credit consulting revenues. So, hindi yan considered sa cash flow kasi wala namang cash na involved. May 25, debit Gevera withdrawals, credit cash. So, nag-withdraw yung owner sa kanyang business and ang withdrawals ng owner is magpo-fall under ng financing activities. So, lalagay natin itong credit cash dito sa financing activities. So, lagay natin yung remarks as withdrawals na 14,000 for, ah, sorry, 14,000 pesos na negative kasi siya ay cash outflow. May 27, debit salaries expense credit cash. So, salaries ulit, syempre, lagay natin siya sa operating activities na salaries. At what amount? 7,200 na negative. May 30, debit utilities expense, credit utilities payable, 1,400. So, walang cash na involved. Hindi siya kasama dito sa ating mga tinitake down na notes kasi wala siyang cash na involved. May 30, debit cash, credit accounts receivable. So, meron na namang cash received from customers na 24,000 pesos na positive kasi siya ay cash inflow. And last, utilities expense credit cash, 3,000 pesos. So, siya ay operating activities. So, we have yet utilities na 3,000 pesos na negative. Okay. Nagawa na natin yung or na-separate na natin yung mga cash transactions ni Wedding RS or na-classify na natin yung mga cash flows niya from operating, investing, and financing activities. Ngayon, titingnan naman natin yung adjusting entries na ginawa natin last time. Baka meron din kasi doon involved na cash transaction. Okay, so nung tinignan natin yung adjusting entries dun sa discussion natin ng adjusting entries sa, sa step 5 ng accounting cycle is na, na found out natin na wala namang cash transactions na involved dun sa mga adjusting entries. Ngayon, gagawin natin since na na-classify na natin yung cash flows ni entity from, from operating, investing, and financing it's total natin yung total operating. So ito, Negative 8 minus 14.4 minus 10 plus 26.4 minus 6.6 .6 plus 10,000 minus 7.2 plus 24 minus 3 is equal sa 11,200 pesos. Meaning, cash provided by operating activities is 11,200. Provided kasi ang ang net cash flow from operating activities is positive. Sa investing naman, we have 420 plus 15 equals negative 435,000 pesos. Ibig sabihin, ang net cash, it, cash used in investing activities is 435,000 pesos. Used ang ginamit kasi siya ay cash outflow net cash outflow ng investing activities. Sunod is yung financing. We have 250 plus 210 minus 14,000 ay 446,000 pesos. 
net cash provided by the financing activities is 446,000 pesos. So ngayon, ipoproceed na natin yung paggawa ng statement of cash flows. Okay, so gagawa na tayo ngayon ng statement of cash flows. Unahin natin yung mga cash flows from operating activities. Cash flows from operating activities. Okay, yung mga data na ilalagay natin dito is galing dun dito sa index card. Sa paggawa ng statement of cash flows is, ang una natin gagawin is yun yung mga positive cash flows muna. So, yung mga inflows muna ang nasa <coughs> ibabaw. So, ito, ito ay outflow, outflow, outflow. Ito, inflow, cash received from customers. May positive ulit dito na 10,000. Cash received from customers and we have 24,000 dito na cash received from customers. So, lalagay natin dito is cash received from customers. Lahat muna ng mga cash inflows yung ilalagay natin. And since na pare-parehas lang naman yung cash received from customers, represent lang natin siya as single line item. We have 26,400 plus... 10,000 plus 24,000 equals 60,400 peso. So, lahat ng cash inflow na ilagay na natin dito. Susunod na natin yung mga cash outflows. Prepaid rent. So, lagay natin dito. Payments for rent. Na? 8,000 pesos na negative. Payments for insurance. Yung sunod. Payments for insurance na 14,400 pesos. Sunod, payments of accounts payable. So, payments to suppliers na 10,000 pesos. Sunod, salaries. Payments for salaries. We have 6,600. Tapos, meron pa ditong isang salaries na 7,200. So, pagkasamahin na lang natin yung payment for salaries 6,600 plus 7,200 equals 13,800 pesos. Sunod, yung payments for utilities expense. How much? 3,000 pesos. Okay, na-determine na natin yung net cash flows provided or kapag negative, used in from operating activities na 60,400 plus 8,000 plus 14,400 plus 10 Ah, sorry, 60,400 60, minus 8, minus 14,400, minus 10, minus 13,800, minus 3, equals 11,200 pesos yung cash or yung net cash flows provided from operating activities. Susunod natin yung investing activities and yung financing activities. Cash flows from investing activities. So, ito naman yung mga activities or yung mga cash flows from investing activities na nakuha natin from journal entries. So, lalagay natin. So, wala ditong cash inflow. So, lahat siya ay cash outflow. Therefore, lalagay na natin yung payments to acquire 
service vehicle na 420,000 pesos. Payments to acquire office equipment na 15,000 pesos. So, kapag payment siya ay outflow, negative. Therefore, net cash flows provided or kapag negative is used in from okay, investing activities is negative 435 thousand pesos. Okay, cash flows from financing activities. So, cash received from investments by the owner is 250,000. Cash received from borrowings 210,000 and payments for withdrawals is negative 14,000 pesos. Net cash flows provided or used in from financing activities is 446,000 pesos. So, cash flows from operating is 11,200. Cash flows from investing is negative 435. And cash flows from financing is positive 446. Therefore, net increase or decrease in cash. After natin ma-determine yung total cash flows from operating, investing, and financing, titingnan natin yung net increase or decrease in cash. Ang gagawin lang natin is pagpagplasplasin lang natin itong tatlong ito. So, 11,200 minus 435,000 pesos plus 446 equals sa 22,200 na positive. So, ibig sabihin, net increase in cash is 22,200 pesos. After nating ma-determine yung net increase and decrease in cash, is i-consider natin yung cash balance at the beginning of the period. So, kung ito ay May 31, 2019, and for the month ended May 31, 2019, ang beginning nun would be May 1, 2019. Okay. Ang wedding RS is in-establish siya noong May 1, 2019. So, yung cash balance niya is zero. Ang May 2019 is first month, first month of operations ng entity. Therefore, wala pang mga beginning balances yung mga accounts ni wedding RS. Cash balance May 31, 2019 Since na ito ay zero, therefore, 22,200 yung cash balance ni wedding RS. Which is, ito rin yung amount ng cash sa balance sheet na ginawa natin kanina lang. So, itong 22,200 is ito yung cash na mag-a-appear sa statement of financial position or balance sheet. 